Dear Retroku, by the time you're reading this, you're already awake. I decided to borrow your video games and consoles for the time being. On the plus side, your Specky collection is still here, along with your ZX Spectrum. P.S. I reorganized your room by moving your bookshelves on top of each other. You're welcome in advance. Well, I woke up to empty bookshelves in my room, my ZX Spectrum collection is still there, thank fucking god, and I found this on the shelf. <sighs> I fucking hate Mondays. When I find out the person who actually took my games out of the shelves, I'm gonna kick them right in the balls. Right after I thank them for reorganizing my bookshelves, it looks really nice. But for now, what the hell is this? 15-in-1 Game Controller. Complete gaming system. Contains 15 thrilling video games. Portable for use at home or on the road. On the road! Includes three AA batteries. Oh shit, I'm sold. If Polaroid is selling me a controller with 15 great games into this thing, and that includes three AA batteries, well you can count me the fuck in. But wait, why Polaroid out of all companies? What the fuck is this? Okay, first of all, I've never seen output cables like this before. These are basically like the headphone jacks but for your TV. Second, why is this dongle and composite cables necessary to use when you could have made the output cables composite instead of these? And third, you FOOLS! Yeah, I'm pissed. It also doesn't help that I have to go to Walmart to buy some AA batteries for this damn thing. I'll be right back. Alright, so I'm back home from Walmart, I got a new haircut, I bought a new bookshelf while also reorganizing the bookshelves in the corner of my wall, and I bought the AA batteries too, now don't worry about that. So now, let's go ahead and start setting this damn thing up. Let's get it over with. Right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's play some damn games. Oh god. It can't be. It's... The plug and play of my childhood?! Before I considered myself resident fat ass as an adult, I was a skinny homeboy in 06. I only had a Game Boy Advance along with Pong, Asteroids, Yars Revenge that my stepfather bought me at a pawn shop. Now while I didn't have an OG Xbox, a PlayStation 2, or god forbid a GameCube, I had this monstrosity. I had so many bad memories playing this thing. I played this terrible dodgeball game and I remember saying Ficker as a way to dodge the F-bomb from my parents. Mother Ficker! Are you kidding me? Could you tell I was a spoiled kid? Now if you thought that was the only NES on a chip console that I had at the time, well you ain't seen nothing yet. I remember owning one of these bootleg consoles, the Power Player Super Joystick. These things always were, and are still found in flea markets. This one in particular has this weird Nintendo and Sega controller combo, with the N64 controller being the main console, the Sega Genesis 6 button controller being the second player controller, and a gun. Now if you really want to get to the point of this system, it has 76,000 games in one. Yeah, I call bullshit on this claim. The NES has about 716 officially released games during the lifespan of the system according to Wikipedia, and for it to boldly claim this is totally misleading. Not that it matters, because the library of games repeats itself, it's cheap, feels cheap, and it's prone to breaking. God damn it! I thought it was shovel resistant! Look, I pity the fool who also grew up with one of these things as a kid, but for me it was a really good time waster after dealing with homework. Now while I could have played my Game Boy Advance or later on a Nintendo DS Lite, I pretty much lost my Game Boy Advance after putting it on the roof of the car, and I fucked up the cartridge slot on my Nintendo DS. This is why you shouldn't trust me with a Nintendo DS. Put a restraining order on me for the love of God. Now, let's waste no time and start playing this monstrosity of a system, shall we? I think I'm gonna be sick after this. So as the plastic packaging states, it's got 15 games all in one system, and I'll take its word for it. It doesn't need to be flashy, it gets right to the point. It's 15 games and nothing more. Now before we begin, I'm gonna rank each game using my trusted gameometer, as you can see on the bottom of your screen, and to see which game I found worth playing, whether they're good, whether they're bad, whether they're meant. Let's start with the first game in the system called Motor Alley. The game starts immediately after you push the start button on the menu. No title screen, just start your fucking engine, you dimwit. SHIT! Yeah, 
that this is just a boring motorcycle racer. The road is always straight, there is never any challenge when racing to the finish line apart from the time limit, you only have two obstacles to avoid, the roadblocks and the opponents, the steering feels delayed which makes avoiding any obstacles a chore because you have to think ahead before you crash into them, and worst of all, the game resets itself after you beat the level. The distance meter never changes, meaning you have to start all over again. I'm gonna be running into the same issue again and again, aren't I? Alright, next game, Runner Car. This game sort of plays like Road Fighter on the NES. You drive from point A to point B, collecting fuel and... cash? This game is almost the same as Motor Rally, but unlike that game, this game has turns. Very awkward turns. Like, your car doesn't even turn to the direction of the road, you just sort of have to brake in order to center yourself. You know a simple sprite rotation would have helped? Oh, and did I mention the obstacles? There are roadblocks, cars, and trucks you have to avoid. If you crash into them, it takes two seconds to respawn. And by the time you spawn back on the road, you already lost fuel. But it's even worse if you get rear-ended by a brain-dead AI car driver that can't even steer away from the crash site, or when you try to leap the obstacle you just crashed into! Oh, come on! Give me a break! Are you serious right now? The three vehicles crash into the same roadblock without any effort of steering away from each other? Okay, let's just finish this round and act like nothing happened. Are you kidding me? The game resets itself after completing only four stages? Could they at least put in the effort to add more stages than four? <laughs> nah. Alright, what's next on this list here? Last c Cabra? Is that correct? What the fuck does Cabra mean in English? Unless they were trying to call it Last Cobra, I guess it would make more sense, but do they even know what it means when you translate Cabra in Spanish? It's GOAT! It's Spanish for GOAT! Anyways, Last Goat is a boring shoot 'em up that does not involve goats, unfortunately, for the goat enthusiasts and all of us. There's nothing really much to say apart from the repetitive background and very weird enemy placements. Usually in arcade shoot 'em ups, the enemies come down from the top of the screen for you to shoot them, but in here, they just spawn randomly, making you lose a life. Oh, come on! How was I supposed to know they were going to spawn where I was at? And if you thought that was enough, how about the boss battle? This level's boss just comes down and starts shooting projectiles without warning, making you lose a life in an instant. How many attacking monsters warn you first? Again, in other shoot-em-ups, the boss usually comes down giving you enough time to prepare for the big boss battle. This game says fuck it and throws the genre's logic in the trash. And before you ask, yes, the game repeats itself after the boss battle. It doesn't flash in your face like in the last two games, oh no. The game keeps going the same way as you started it. Very fun. We're already on the fourth game and I'm already getting tired of this. You know what, I'll be right back and get some water. Are you kidding me? There is no title screen for this damn game? I guess I had it coming either way. Arrow Engine is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up. You take down enemies, get to the main level boss, and collect power-ups. It's literally the same game as Last Goat, but now you're in outer space. This time the game has a scoring system, and the gameplay is slightly more polished than the GOATA game. That doesn't mean it's functional, however. There isn't even any challenge to the game, you just shoot, 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 and much like Last Goat, the boss ship comes out and shoots without warning. Once you already know he's coming out from the side of the screen, you can dodge his attacks and never die again. I'm not even joking when I say that once you collect all three power-ups, you can just stay in place shooting everything in sight and kill the boss ship from here. Once you killed the boss, then guess what? What? The game starts over again. And then, your score resets to zero. No! What is the fucking point of the scoring system that the game can't even save your high score? I might as well analyze the footage to see what the high score was before the game resetted itself. Well, there goes my highest score I've ever achieved in a game. Alright, next up is Ocean Quest, and with a title like this, I sure as hell hope it to be an underwater adventure kind of game. Nope, I was way off. It's another racer that's the same game as the previous ones. You collect time extension blocks and one-up blocks this time around. At this point I got bored and decided to cheat my way to the finish line by pushing the opponent boats to the sides and make them explode. That was the most fun I had with this game. Next up on the list is Spinball. Oh please let it be a pinball game, please let it be a pinball game, and it's not! Is that supposed to be the spinball? Because that sure as hell isn't. You're a weird looking UFO shaped cart on the railroad looking for a key to unlock a door that is in the middle of the track. The goal is to reach for the end of the station before the time runs out. You can collect money bags to add up to your score, alarm clocks to extend the time, and a shield power up that turns you into a glowing sphere that destroys anything in sight. That's gotta be the spinball if I'm not mistaken. 
Honestly, this game isn't bad. It plays fine, but the controls could be better. And of course, how could I forget? Four levels and the game resets. How could I forget? Okay, next up is Insect Chase, and this better be what the title suggests, dammit. No, how about you get it this time, asshole? You're a butterfly net in the middle of the desert with trees and water, I guess. The goal is to catch a significant amount of butterflies that fly around the screen before you move on to the next stage. Once you complete the first stage, the game gets slightly challenging with more insects that you have to avoid, such as a bee or a dragonfly. It's not a bad game, but again, the controls hinder the gameplay. They're kinda delayed and the physics are slippery, which causes you to accidentally catch the wrong insect, making you lose a life. Not that it matters, because they deliberately get close to you anyways. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt and give this game a meh. Okay, next up is Bird's Nest. Yeah, Bird's Nest. Definitely not in a field of flowers we're in. This is the Bird's Nest. Misleading titles aside, you're a hand catching golden eggs from a pelican who is idle in the air. The goal is to collect 10 eggs while keeping the bird's balance in midair for as long as you can, not to mention dodging its feces. Once you've collected the 10 eggs, you get a win for all your troubles, and what happens then? The game resets itself, of course it would. At this point I'm getting tired of repeating myself and it's driving me mad! Okay, so now we're on the next page and our next game is Bingo Zap. I'll let the footage speak for itself and then we'll talk. Yup, just move the ball into the hole with a flashing star and that's it. How about adding walls in between so that I don't get to the flashing hole real easily? How about adding more holes and obstacles that adds up to the challenge than what we already have in this heap of crap? Hell, even the ball game that is built on my HTC EVO 4G is better than this game for fuck's sake, and that was made years after this crappy ball game was made! Right, let's just move on to the next game before I get distracted playing the much better ball game here. Damn it. Alrighty then, so now that we're on the 10th game, I'm happy to say that we have 5 games left to review. Now with that being said, let's take a look at Ball Clash. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no! It's gotta be a dream, it's gotta be a dream. Hey, what's up? Eh, yeah, nothing much. I'm just thinking about this one terrible dodgeball game I played as a kid. Oh, are you talking about that plug-and-play system we played 16 years ago? Yeah. And what do you mean by we? Uh, hello, I'm Retroclone, a clone of you who happens to know more about your childhood than your family does. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe you should give it another chance. I mean, who knows? You could probably beat the game now that we're adults. I don't know, man. I mean, if I play it again, I'm probably gonna end up losing the same way as I did when I was a child. You don't know. We were just dumbasses when we were kids and playing it and taking it less seriously. But now as adults, we can take almost anything seriously. You know what? I'll do it. I'll play the game and give it another chance. Aren't you coming with me? No, I'm still busy, but I'll catch up with you later whenever I can. Okay, well, catch you later then. Let's get it over with. Okay, let's play this game and see why it has become the childhood trauma of mine. The game starts with a screen showing you who you're up against. Then the game begins and your goal is to throw all the dodgeballs to the side of your opponent before the time runs out. In order to prevent your rival from throwing dodgeballs at you, you can counter their throws by throwing a ball at it which changes the direction of the ball, or throw balls at them which stuns them for a few seconds. Get hit and kiss a first round goodbye because by the time you get back up, the opponent has already thrown all their dodgeballs to your side. Fortunately, there are only two rounds in this game, but fuck up the second time, and it's game over. Also, something that I never really mentioned is the controls. Apart from the flimsy joystick and the terrible D-pad, there are only four buttons in this controller. The A and B buttons, and the turbo buttons. For the most part, the games I played on this system always used the A button, but because most of the games require rapid fire like the aforementioned shoot'em ups, I used the turbo A button. Also, the B button and turbo B button exist, but as far as I can tell, the B button doesn't do much apart from using the brakes in the racing games, and the turbo B button is just a waste of a good button. Well, finally I can add the B buttons to my list of underused buttons, but I digress. Back to the game. Playing this is infuriating! I could never beat the shit out of this monkey fuck as a kid, let alone completing the first two rounds. What? what, what? 
Now he's curving his overhand throws? Now all of a sudden there are curved throws that you can perform? How the fuck is that even fair? Oh, come on, buddy. Get back up. Get back up. Yes. Yes. Yes! Hell yeah! Now that's what's up. Look at this stupid son of a bitch. He shakes his head knowing damn well I won the game fair and square. Oh, but when you lose, he does his happy dance in front of you while you sit there and cry about your loss. That's how much the game wants to see you fail. So after 16 painstaking years of anger and patience, I finally beat the shit out of the monkey fuck, and now we're on to the second stage where we're up against this hamster. Well, finally I get a new rival to go up against. Good fucking riddance to that stupid ass monkey fuck. Hopefully this time our new rival could actually play fairly, unlike that stupid monkey. He's not gonna play fair, is he? I'm done. I'm fucking done with this game. I try to give it another chance, but I just can't take it anymore. It is unfair, it is impossible to beat, I fucking hate this game! I just wish I had my real games instead of playing this heap of crap that is hooked up to my television for fuck's sake. Hell, I would like to know who actually took my video games so I can get my hands on them. I did it. What? I took all your video games and consoles from the shelves. Why did you do it? Well, you were sleeping, so I didn't want to bother asking you, and I decided to take them all and play them outside. Look, you know I don't mind it whenever you grab one of my games or consoles from the shelves. In fact, I don't even care at all, but couldn't you just simply have played them in the living room instead? God damn it, mosquitoes! Fuck. You are one dumb son of a bitch, you know that? Yeah, well, what of it? Oh, just bring me my stuff and let's get stocking. <laughs> Okay, so what now? Well, I need to finish reviewing the games on this fucking console. Oh shit, you were still playing this thing I left on the shelf? Well, what choice did I have? Wait for at least three minutes to load a ZX Spectrum game, or at least play this fucking thing? Or at least emulate the games through your PC? Who's the dumb son of a bitch now? Oh, shut up. Look, I'll just get out of your way and, uh, I'm gonna borrow your ZX Spectrum for a few minutes. Yeah, whatever. Okay, we only have about four games left. Let's just get it over with so I can play my real games in peace. Next up is Bounce. I haven't even pushed any buttons and I already lost a life. Also, great job ripping the death sound effect from Contra on the NES, guys. You're doing yourselves justice by making sure none of us gamers would notice. Anyways, bounce is like Pong, but now with four paddles instead of two. You have four directions to bounce the ball. If you're able to get it in time, you can score points, but if you fail to catch the ball in time, it'll cost you a life. Jeez, imagine not catching the ball in time and end up getting killed because of it. That wouldn't be fun, now would it? Now, I don't know why you start with round one, but you do. Apparently, you have to score a specific amount in order to get to the second stage, but I can never do it because of the sensitive controls. Mother Ficker, Are you kidding- Can you now tell why I dislike this game? There are power-ups that can help you throughout the levels. A more slower ball. Pretty cool. Cash to add up to your score. Pretty cool. And smaller paddles. Pretty cool. Oh, God damn it all! I did manage to get to round two, but that's about it. It's literally the same game as the previous round. Could you tell the difference? I don't know. Have you taken a look at the score on the top left corner of your screen? Yeah, it's still the same game. Alright, next game, Fast Race. Oh, oh now we get a title screen? We are 12 games in and now we get a title screen? And there isn't even a title right off the bat, it's just a sprite artwork of a Porsche Boxster next to a windmill in the middle of a desert, I guess. Moving on. Did I see that correctly? My car can bounce? Apart from the absurdity of the situation, you're not actually racing against other cars as the title would suggest. Instead, the goal is to jump over highway bridges with pillars on the road and reach the end of the level without crashing. You must avoid crazy-ass cars and trucks that crash into you non-stop, little pieces of blocks that are in the middle of the road, and traffic cones that blow you up for some reason. Like in the previous games I mentioned before, there are only four stages you have to complete, and they all have a different setting. You have town, town again but with snow, 
it's desert and city. You can collect extra lives, which look like gas cans that you can buy in stores, but sometimes they're placed in areas where you'll likely die. And sometimes you can't even tell if the gas container is an obstacle in the middle of the road, so you'll end up ignoring it most of the time. But what makes this game so bad it's good is the fact that the car can jump over buildings, bridges, and incomplete or poorly built roads. And even the fact that the car has no sense of speed despite it going 149 miles per hour. Oh yeah, the car can also crush any vehicle in sight. Just make sure you time your jumps before you get close to the bridge or else you're dead. Die multiple times and it's game over. Now when I was a kid, I could only go as far as desert, and as a result of that, well, I could never beat the game. But I'm an adult, damn it, and I was determined to beat this game, and so I did. And you wanna know how it ends? I know what you're thinking. It's shocking. Positively shocking. Okay, next game, Mr. Potato. Did, did I miss something, or is there no title screen in this game? I'm sorry, but what the fuck kind of title is One Day of Mr. Potato Push Start? Enemy story? I'm sorry I've ever doubted you. Anyways, you take the role of Mr. Potato, who looks like a yellow Kirby, but with shoes. The goal is to free the totally not cross-dressing Kirby who's stuck in the cage. In order to free Kirbina, you must collect a small amount of keys which are guarded by evil jank lanterns and bats which kinda remind me of Golbat. You can take them down by firing pellets at them. One pellet for the jack o' lantern, and two pellets for the bats. If you're expecting Kirby to swallow the enemies and then spit them out, well this ain't the Kirby game for you, honey. My only problem with the enemies is that they will respawn 4 seconds after you've taken them down. And sometimes you'll get killed by them if you're standing on the place they're respawning. <laughs> What's even more annoying is the fact that if you get up on a platform after climbing the ladders, they will try to approach you and kill you. You only have three lives, so get hit once, twice, or thrice, then it's game over. Believe it or not, there are actually six stages in total with only two of them taking place in the same setting as the other, so I guess it's four stages instead of six. Once you've completed all six stages, you're actually rewarded with a nice little victory screen with both Yellow Kirby and Kirbina being all lovey-dovey. Aw, that's sweet. But what makes this weird is that the game actually has a clone on the Wii knockoff console, the Wireless 60. Besides the graphical enhancements, the gameplay remains the same, however there are noticeable differences to the game, such as Mr. Potato now being Mr. Onion with a hairdo, there are more enemies to take down, you have a time limit for some reason, a triple digit score system, and falling damage. Oh, thank goodness I have the better game here! Despite its flaws, Mr. Potato is definitely the more playable game out of all the games I reviewed for the system. It plays well, the graphics look good, and at least there's no falling damage unlike that wireless 60 counterpart. Amen to that! Moving on to our last two games is Right Spot. This is the third game that begins with a title screen. Also, is it just me, or does this creature kinda look like Cheese from Sonic X? Moving on, Right Spot is a puzzle game where the goal is to move colored bars of soap to their correct color spot. Surprisingly, there are more than six levels in this game, but they just end up duplicating the same puzzle you already solved, only they remove the dotted line to see if you can solve it in a different way. Yeah, very challenging. The game has a time limit and a life counter if you weren't aware. At least the timer isn't strict, so don't get pressured into solving it in time. If you do fail to solve it in time, you lose a life, but should you lose all your lives in this game, then it's game over. It's not a bad game, but it certainly isn't good either. It's repetitive as all hell. So all in all, meh. So this is it. The last game on the system. Oh, I can't wait to chuck this son of a bitch in the trash and finally play my real games at once. Wait, haven't I seen this game before? But hey, I mean, if you want to play Roadstar... Don't? Oh god, it's that game. Yes, as the white man with brown hair and glasses once said, these games have been spread around consoles like this, this, and even this. I just happen to own three consoles that have that same stupid design, and Roadstar just happens to be one of the games in the system. I'm sorry, Scotty Boy, but I really need to play Roadstar or else... You're not getting your Specky back! Oh shit, if I have to do it for my 40-year-old Specky, then I'll do it. Let's play Roadstar! Well, I did it. You played Roadstar? Yep, I played it once and I'll never play it again. Well, good for you. Anyways, here's your Specky. Dude, what did you do to it? 
Well, I saw how messed up your ZX Spectrum was, so I thought I'd buy some parts on ZX Renew and give it the cosmetic changes it deserved. Well, I like what you did to it, but where are the original parts? Oh, I still have the original parts right over here, but I'm gonna put them in the box later. I was gonna use the red keyboard mat that I bought, but it didn't really match the color scheme of your ZX Spectrum, so I thought I used the original keyboard mat instead. I guess it's just a way to say I'm sorry for taking all your games and console from your shelves. Well, I like what you did to it, and hey, I forgive you. Also, just a reminder, feel free to take any of my games and consoles from the shelves. Just don't take everything at once, okay? Deal. And hey, Retroclone. Thanks for reorganizing my shelves. You really did a great job. Well, apart from the changes Retroclone made to my ZX Spectrum, I'm pretty happy that none of my games were stolen. And as for this thing, well, I'm glad it's finally over. I can't believe that it's been 16 years since I've ever had my hands on this thing, and now that I'm 22 years old, I still have it in my hands. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a bad system, but after 16 years of revisiting this thing, I actually found some games that were playable and I might have overlooked as a kid. But does that mean I actually like this system? No. It's obvious that these things were meant to be sold cheaply in stores regardless of the quality in its games or in its overall design. Any low-income parent would most likely give this to their child thinking that their kid would have fun playing with this in the comfort of their rooms. I mean, look at me. Does it look like I'm happy to you 16 years later? Looking back at this thing, it's very weird that Polaroid decided to stoop this slow by selling a product like this when they're very well known to consumers as a camera company. I also find it weird that the majority of the bootleg consoles I own just happen to have this weird controller design. It's like they were trying to model it after the Sega Dreamcast controller, but somehow made it worse. It even has the same markings on the joystick, damn it! I'm 22 now, and I own a ZX Spectrum. Now while I don't like this crappy plug-and-play console, in the end, I'm glad it was part of my childhood no matter how fucking stupid this thing is. And if you were a 2000s kid who grew up with one of these things as a kid, well, my condolences to you. Right. So now that I have my real games back, I should definitely take a break and play Oh Dear God This Was Published by the makers of Gaza Super Soccer. I'll stick to booty instead. Should have to do it for my 40 year old Specky. Well, let's do it. Let's pray. Let's pray. We'll pray. We'll, 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 we'll pray to God. I can't even say it. God damn it. How the fuck is that even fair?